Welcome back to Wardrobia and another Zoomcast about another great audio book for you to download. This one is a story of time travel. It's called Time Leap Date Me. It's actually called Time Leap One because it turns out it's one of three. The author is Steve Howry. It's good to see you. It's oh, good I to love you in your room. <laughs> this is actually my wardrobe. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I got some acoustic tiles and I put the microphone and the mixer and the computer in here and, and this is where, this is where uh, Time Leap Date Me, for me, happened here. Oh my God. I'm trying to take a screenshot. Hold on a second. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. I'll tell you what, if you don't mind. No, uh, absolutely. Mind. Hey, hey, if I'm happy with the video going on YouTube, I'm happy with the screenshot. <laughs> Uh, a friend of mine, uh, he does what you do, you know, but, you know, he's just started out. Uh, he has. So, how's he going? Audio book reader. He's, he's really pretty good. He's doing very well. Great. What kind of stuff is he doing? Science fiction. Wow. Yeah, that's good stuff. <laughs> well, yours is, is pretty much science fiction, let's face it. Yeah, well, it, it is. It is. I mean, unless you think time travel is real. <laughs> <laughs> in which case it's an extra it's an instructional book but <laughs> let, let's talk about it then the book is called uh, okay time leap date me so it's the first what of, of a series of books have you have, yeah, yeah. have you just written the one so far or, or have you got the others written as well yeah they're all finished yes they're how many <laughs> 420 no there's um three books so what three was books. the inspiration for it then Oh, actually, I'll tell you exactly what it is. I have. I live in this place called Suzhou. It's a beautiful town in um, in Jiangsu Province in China. So that's where I've been living for the last twelve years. And I was on a boat trip. We have a beautiful canal that goes around the uh, the city. And I was going with a couple of colleagues. I I, I, I teach. You know, unfortunately, I can't write full time. Anyway, I, I I am a teacher. And one of my colleagues was was telling me. Uh, his phone and uh, in those days the phone was all in different pieces you know the battery and the cover and all this so anyway he put the phone back together again he said uh, and the data changed on the phone yes so that was the idea behind it I just thought if you had a phone which you could change the data on the phone and uh, it actually changes the real date then that would be amazing anyway, that would be that, some that phone it. app yeah and that's exactly what Joe, the character, so that's Joe, the character in, in the book. He has, he has this phone, this new phone, and there's an app on yeah. it called Date Me, mm. and he discovers right, it, right. that it, it makes him into a time traveler. Exactly. Yes, that's right. And uh, as regards, you know, the the places he goes, well, it's it's. I've always had an interest in uh, ancient Egypt and ancient China, so they seem like logical places to to go. <laughs> Well, the other the other logical one as well, which was the one at the very beginning, was was when he worked out he could travel travel through time, was to actually go back and change a few things. And the first thing he tried to change was nine eleven, which is quite a noble <laughs> thing to do. Yeah, it was. It was. And I think I think that happened because it was that date. It was around the anniversary of nine eleven when I when this all happened. Right. I got the idea for changing. So that's why that happened. Mm. Right. And then he goes back and he tries to stop the Second World War. He tries to do that, yes. And, uh, you know, it's funny when you, you're you creating something, you're writing something, you often, you don't know where it's going. You know, I, I, I didn't know whether they could stop it or not. And So uh, you didn't plan out the whole story and then and then fill it out. You actually just went for it and just started, just started writing. <laughs> More or less, yes. But I, I had stories in mind, so I knew I knew the stories I was going to write. So I knew I was going to do ancient Egypt. I knew I was doing ancient China, and I knew I had to do the Second World War and stop Hitler. But you know, no, I did, apart from that, I didn't know all the details. I just knew the outline, and I didn't know where they were going to go. <laughs> and the characters in the book, I'm guessing your other half is Chinese, and and she was the inspiration for Nikki. 
That's that's right. Yes, yes. And Joe is you? <laughs> Not really. No, I, this is a common <laughs> factor. I mean, I, I did live in London, but uh, and uh, I did go to Edinburgh University, which is what Joe did. So yeah. th there's there's common links. But yeah. he, he, he's younger than me, though. That's. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But he's, so a, he's at an age you've been, huh? So you've experienced being that age. <laughs> you know, he's not older. Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of and, course. And, well, you don't know. You don't know, do you? I mean, you might have time travelled. Th that's right, yeah. And uh, and the characters in the book, my favourite was Smirnov. He was my favourite oh, character yes, in the yes. book. Where did he come yeah. from? The Russian hitman. Ah, uh, he came from a bottle of vodka. I think that was <laughs> yeah, that's his name. Yeah, but I mean the the idea of this the idea of of this. I mean, he's quite well, I... he's quite scary in a way, but he's also yeah, yeah. He's also quite quite a character too. He doesn't. He's not scary in a way in an angry way. He's scary because he's he's no. powerful. He kills people, but he's not. Yes, yes. He's not angry. He's like it's like you know the the one of the first scenes with him in when he's in the park and he basically goes yeah, yeah. Oh, time travel he's like okay. <laughs> he's like he's really he's like okay i'll give this a go you know like he's done worse things <laughs> and so i really yeah, like yeah, him yeah. so so was there someone you had in mind when you wrote him <laughs> i can't reveal that i'm sorry <laughs> oh really <laughs> wow no well you know i think the thing is that um, you know you I don't know, but I think of a Russian. If you say uh, a hitman, you know, mm -hmm. a Russian is one of the people I, I would think of. And uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it was just props into your head, you know. I, I didn't I didn't go through a list and saying, oh, do I want a Romanian or, or a Spanish guy or, or an American? I didn't think like that. It was just Russian. It just had to be. <laughs> what was fun for me was, because as I'm going through it, narrating it and I thought oh yeah Russian I can probably do a Russian so then I do a Russian and then like within a few pages actually this was in the audition too within a few pages he meets another Russian and I'm thinking have I got more than one Russian oh, yes, voice because yes, I'm going to need at least two <laughs> so that was uh that was quite fun I don't well, know if, was... I don't know if we're too much away but he meets <laughs> Lenin it's um yeah in the book yeah yes 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 that, that, yeah that's okay <laughs> Yeah. But, uh, yes, he he does, and and uh, I thought that part um, would be a good good um, narration test. You know, it'd be good good to put that out there and see who could do that the best. <laughs> so I actually, thought it would be quite difficult to do two Russians. <laughs> yeah, actually, at the very beginning when I did the first fifteen minutes, because you don't know how this works when you get offered a, yeah. a job like this, you do the first fifteen minutes, and then the author checks it out, and and you might get a bit of feedback. And I had Nikki nowhere near. You were like, "No, nah, this is." Good. And I'm thinking, "Oh, geez, am I gonna, am I gonna even get? You know, we're gonna make it any further because I've got like the second most important character, probably the most important character because it's based on your other half. I've got it totally wrong. But I did have it totally wrong. By the time we got it right, she was much, much better. Much. Oh, much better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why I went so hard. I went so really hard and kind of. You did, yeah. Him. A sort of Mancurian sort of Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> you nearly didn't get the job. I have to tell you this, Graham. Why is that? <laughs> you see, uh, you you were uh, not the first audition I had, and um, you know it was great. It was a great thrill just to hear somebody read the book. You know, right? And uh, I thought that's the the first guy. I thought that's it. You know, and I was happy. And I, I was gonna I was gonna give him the job. Yeah. You know? And then. My, what my wife said, but wait a minute, you know, you should listen to others first. <laughs> you know, there might be some better ones. And I thought, oh, okay, I'll listen to others, right? And right. then... Um, so so at this stage, this little other little guy had well. got it. This, it wasn't no, it. well, I didn't... In my, only in my mind, I mean... Right, yeah. I thought he was the best one, cause, but he was the only one. <laughs> he was the only one. But I was quite... I was quite I was quite happy to say, okay, let's give it to him, you know? Yeah. And then, uh, because my wife, uh, so um, then we got about 12 in the end. And so we listened to them all. And, yeah. uh, and she, she, Wendy, my wife, she really liked your voice. She said that was the best one. And oh, I now I feel well, really I bad. Know, and then after the um... first 15 minutes, she's the voice I mess up. And she got me the gig. <laughs> That's terrible. She did. did she you ever know, but, forgive but, me? Uh, the funny was because um, 
I, I couldn't quite agree with that, to be honest. I mean, now I'm totally agree. You know, you were the man <laughs> for this uh, job, Graham. Really. So, so totally. I was second but choice in your mind when we were working together. together. In the back yeah, of your yeah. mind, you're thinking, <laughs> I should have gone with that other guy. <laughs> but I'll tell, tell you what the funny thing was. So, so Wendy was really keen on you, said, you know, it must be Graham. It's Graham. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm not quite so sure. And then, so I thought, I've got two, I got two friends, right? I've got two friends. One is the guy I mentioned, um, and he's also a narrator. I've got a friend in Australia. So yeah. I, I asked them both, you know, which yeah. do you think? I played, play, let them hear all the auditions. And they chose totally different ones. <laughs> <laughs> no help so I had, at all. <laughs> no help at all, you know. <laughs> so in the end, I thought, God, I spent a long time. I listened to yours again and again and then the others. And I, I had to admit she was right. Wendy was right. They so, usually are. And she was right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, it was just such a thrill to do, and it's such a such a fun book. I mean, I got to be Anthony Eden. I mean, when I got to the bit where, where, oh, where they know, meet I Anthony Eden, I watched uh, I watched on YouTube some old newsreels of him speaking to try and oh, get, really? yeah yeah to try and get. I knew I wasn't gonna. I'm not an impersonator, so I wasn't gonna get him spot on. But I wanted to get the vibe of him and the age and the the kind of the old Etonian kind of feel to it. And I watched yeah, yeah, them, yeah. and and I got them, and then the book went on, and then the ancient it really, the the book just kept ramping up because it starts with the nine eleven thing, and then it then it's second, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then we're like into ancient Egypt and, and ancient China, as you say. But then mm. towards the end, when when they make the decision, let's go to the future. I mean, that's yes, when yes. it really starts to get freaky. And there's a really good cliffhanger at the end that I won't tell anyone about that has made yeah. me okay, itch to find out yeah, what yeah. happens in the second book because it's, <laughs> it's just so much unfinished business. They've had an adventure, but like now what? You know, it's so yeah, 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 so, yeah. so good. Yeah. <laughs> so did you did you originally intend to write three, or were you just going to do the one? Or no, 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 not at all. No. I, I wrote the one and it was that was going to be the only time leap. I mean, now I'm calling it time leap one. I came back and I, I changed the title and right. before it's just time leap. Yeah. And then when I thought about writing a second one, I thought, okay, well, I've got to call this time leap one and then time leap two, you know? And, yeah. um, I, 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 you had great fun reading it. I had great fun writing it. Did you? Really great fun. And I think, yeah, I love writing, particularly, um, I liked writing the first one, but also all of them actually. So they're all different. And um, in, in Time Leap 2, there's some new characters as well with new accents, Graham. <laughs> well, uh, hopefully I'll get that gig as well. De depending on how the other 12 go, they might lift the game for the second one. It looks like it's still going to be quite competitive <laughs> getting that job for the second one. But I, I would love to do it because I had, I had so much fun doing it. And the book I'd done just before it, I'll be honest with you, I hated it. I'd just done a diet book. Oh. And it was a diet okay. book for people with uh, gastrointestinal problems, for people with irritable bowel syndrome. And it's an important thing. Oh. But it's not. I'd, and I'd gone through this, and it was about eight hours worth of audio. And I'd really, and I'd been slogging this thing out. And I said to my wife, I said, I'm just not enjoying this. And then I saw your uh, one, and I, and I auditioned for it, and I thought, oh, I hope I get this one. Because this will be so much more fun. You know, and so it was just such a, a release because you could have fun with it and the characters and stuff. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Really, really good. Well, I, I, I have to tell you, Graham, I did try narrating it myself, first of all. And how did that go? People said, oh, it was awful. It was terrible. Why? I, so number one thing, I, I can't do voices. I just can't. You know, I'm just useless at voices. I, I mean, even the Russian voice, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, but also, also, so the other thing is, and I don't think, you know, you have a really good flow to your reading, your narration. Whereas I, I kept making mistakes. I mean, big mistakes, you know. Yeah, uh, I make mistakes I too, but, you know, I get to edit them, you know? Yeah, yeah yes, yes. <laughs> and, and, you know, I made well, a I'd, I'd, few mistakes that you that you corrected at the end and I went back and right, corrected yeah. them and dropped them in. You, we yeah, get yeah. that luxury with digital editing these days. That, you know. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. <laughs> no, I, 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 I was worn out by it. It just exhausted me. And I, I thought um, in the end, you know, I wanted it to be good, you know, I want to be professional and 
So that's why I, I, I did it like this, you know. I wanted a professional writer. <laughs> also, the other thing is that, um, you know, I really, I really like to keep the same voices for Tiny 2 and 3, you know. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. What, so, what, um, what, what I do is I, I it, when I'm doing it, and I, and I have a, a character, I have, I have a Google file that I open with notes, and, I, and it'll just be like, you right. know, Russian deep voice, gruff, whatever it is mm. and then i'll also put in the chapter and the page number and the title of where i last did them so that when they come up again i i, I can go back and quickly listen to them to make sure that they're the same and because i'm doing it as i go and i don't know where the the book is headed uh, i uh, i if it's if someone it's, like uh, yeah. someone who's in the newspaper shop at heathrow airport i'll have notes for them too uh, in case he goes back there again and meets right. the same person just in case so i end up with this list of like right, everybody right. you know a taxi driver or anybody will just get a, a little yeah a little section just so because yeah. it'd be no good if they changed halfway through the book you know I see you're wearing a Beatles T-shirt there. Are there are there any plans like in the other books to go back to the sixties? Okay. Ah, no, we don't. We don't want to spoil the next time leap. What do we? Do we? Or should we? we don't want, well, we should don't. We? Want to, no, we don't want to spoil it, but we do want but, to tease it because okay. we want people, and they will once they read Time Leap One, date me, and they yeah. see what a, a great adventure this is, and they get the. And then when they get to the, you get to the point, like after their first couple of time jumps, you get to the point where you're really invested in these characters and you want to see what happens next. It's not, yeah, it yeah. stops being about, wow, I wonder where they'll go. It's more becomes mm. more like, I wonder how they'll get on because yes. you keep setting it up and then it's like, okay, let's see what happens here. So okay. we can tease the other books because once they've, listen to or read even if they're doing the print versions after they've experienced the first one they will want to know what happens in the others so there That's is very true. to take them to the 60s yeah well it's actually time leap three so in time leap two they get they um they go and find king arthur and all the knights of the round table wow wow and this is where a new character comes in because um you know what language are they going to speak you know Chinese yeah, is no good. Uh, modern day English is no good. And so I, I did a lot of research for these books and pretty, maybe people don't realize this, but you know, I did do an awful lot of research, particularly for um, Time Leap 2. Yeah. And uh, so they're going back to ancient Britain, uh, which was just when King Arthur was around, it was just as the Romans had left. So um, it's that sort of Britain. It's, it's post-Roman Britain. And what language did they speak? Well, they used to speak Common, Britan common Britonic. Right. That was the main language, but it was that was a mixture of three different languages, which was um, Britannic, um, Welsh, and Cornish at that time, and uh, and of course they knew some Latin because of the Romans. Yeah. Okay. So so it just happened that Joe was at university with a friend who was Welsh. <laughs> right. I called Gareth Hughes. So Gareth Hughes will be the, the first new character in, in the book. Right. Yeah, a Welshman yeah. who keeps a welcome in the hillside. Look you, look you, look you. There's tasty, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. He's, he's there trying to... But then, um, so that's 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 one of the stories. That's the main story of Time Leap Two, and uh, but there's a lot of other new people in. And then it's when we get into Time Leap Three, and Time Leap Three is called Double Fantasy. Really, after the Lennon album. Yeah. <laughs> right. So so John that's Lennon makes an appearance. Yes. Well, well, Joe's always been a very big John Lennon fan. You know, right. he would be wearing a John Lennon T-shirt. Yeah. So, <laughs> right. so that's how that comes. And and which I mean, I I mean, I'm I I love the Beatles, and and it was funny when it was only last night I was thinking about having this chat, and I thought I wonder if I should ask Steve if he had the chance to go back in time, which period he would go to. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I yeah. will ask you that. But I also thought, I wonder which period I'd go back to. And I thought I'd like to go back to the 60s for the Beatles. But yeah. then I wouldn't know which time to go back to. Because first of all, I right. thought, well, it would be great to, to see the Be a Beatles concert at somewhere like the yeah, Hollywood yeah. Bowl or Shea Stadium. And then I yeah, thought, yeah. no, wait a minute. It'd be great to see the Beatles at the Cavern. And then I thought... Right. No, it'd be great to see the Beatles in Hamburg. And then I thought, well, now I don't know where I'd go. 
What about you? If you got the chance to go back in time, any time, where yeah, would you yeah. go? Why and what would you like to see? Wow, that's a big question, really. <laughs> because it, well, you've just written a one... time. You've just written three time travel books. It shouldn't be yeah. as big a question for you as it is for anybody else, Steve. Well, but it's because um, if I could really go back in time, yeah, I, would, I really would like to go back to, to the pyramids. That I, that's one thing I'd love to do. And, and, and some of the things they did in um, Time Leap 3 I'd like to do. I'd, li I'd like to go to Lemuria and Atlantis. <laughs> really? Really? Yes, so, to... so really, really way, way back? Way, way back, yes. And but, what would but, you like yeah, to more... do there? I'd just like to see it. I'd like to be a time tourist, you know. I mean, Joe Cooper and you know, is all about saving the world and you know yeah. trying to change things for better. I would just be there to, to observe, you know, to watch. I'd be a time tourist. You wouldn't you know, change that period. much. Yeah, but the Beatles, yeah, that was a big thing. I mean, you're too young to remember the Beatles. I am. Either. I was born in '64, so I missed it. Um, yeah, they they I think mm. they broke up when I was my first year at school. They broke up. So mm. yeah, I've no living memory uh, oh. of the Beatles. Well, I've seen McCartney oh. in concert once, and that was in Australia yeah. when I lived in Australia. That's the closest oh, I've okay. got. I, I always yeah. like to say to my friends, because I was in bands. I was lead singer and rhythm guitarist in, in yeah, bands. I heard that, yeah. And in, in New Zealand, I was in a band called Liverpool Direct, and we did a lot of Beatles uh, tunes. Wow. But I always say to people, my ambition was always to sing with Paul McCartney, and my ambition came true. He was on what? stage. He was on stage at the Sydney Entertainment Centre, and I was in the crowd. But we were singing "Hey Jude." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you ever seen him? Yeah, I did. I saw him with Wings in uh, about 1973. Wow, that was really early. Yeah, that's wings. Wildlife that's and uh, and band on the yes. run, and and, and wow. he was fantastic. And uh, you know, the Beatles came to Leicester in 1964. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, I'm going to tell you my age now. Okay, okay. So uh, I was 10 years old. Right. And, but my parents wouldn't let me go. Uh -uh. And, uh, but my sister, my sister said she was going. And I was so, I couldn't believe it. You know, I was really hurt, you know, really upset that she could go and I couldn't. But she was three years older than me. Yeah. So I really missed out. But when she came back, she said, you know, you wouldn't have heard anything. <laughs> Just girls screaming. And pissing themselves <laughs> yeah I mean, so, that, um, that really went on didn't it they reckon yeah 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 but it sort of my dream sort of came true when i did see paul mccartney in leicester yeah uh, that, that was amazing yeah but he, he'd had one set of all the, the new wing stuff and then he did the the beatles as well yeah yeah because he always did yesterday i think he did in the set then i think uh, yeah he did yeah yeah he did a few things but yeah. yeah so if i went back in time sort of a more recent time yes i would I've sort of I've lived through the Beatles, so I, I I feel I don't have to go back to that time. But maybe my dream wouldn't be so much time travel as uh, place travel, you know? Yeah, just actual <laughs> travel. Yeah. yeah, actually being on the stage, so <laughs> playing with them. Let's let's talk yeah. about then. Uh, you'd want what well, you'd want to be on stage with the Beatles playing. I'm like you. I, I play. You know, I, I write songs. I don't just write books. I write songs. And, right. Uh, and we had a band here in Sujo. You did? And we used to play. Yeah, 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 yeah. And how did that so, go? Uh, that was good. It was very good. Yeah, it was a couple of teachers. It was a teacher's band, basically. Yeah. Uh, but we used to go playing in the local bars. Yeah. But um, my, my thing has always been the songwriting. You know, I love songwriting. So I just like writing. But uh, I wrote a few. I've got some stuff on YouTube. You should have to have a look. You should have a look. <laughs> I will. So I look for Steve Howry on YouTube and the stuff on there. Yeah, and it's YouTube, original tunes. Yes, a YouTube channel. I made videos of them. Fantastic. I'll tell you what happened if you got time. Yeah, it was Absolutely. also in lockdown. Okay. It was during lockdown over here in China. And so I, I had no work and uh, not a lot to do. And uh, I was working. I'd finished Time Leap 2, I think, at that time. I was working on Time Leap 3. So I did a bit of work on that. And then um, my wife said to me, Wendy, one day, she said to me, uh, we've got to be careful when we go up out in a crowd. We go out in a crowd. Well, I'd written a song called In a Crowd. Right. So, so I thought, oh, wait a minute, I've got a song about that. And so I looked at the words, I thought, wow, they actually fit very well. I'll just tweak it a bit. 
and I showed it to her just for laughs. And look at this, look, it's funny, right? She picked it up, said, Oh, okay, good. She sent it off to CCTV4, which is a main mainstream TV station here. The next thing I know, they want me to make a video of me singing the song. Wow. And, Playing and the song. And, what, were they going to make the video or did they want you to produce it? Well, the thing was, uh, they couldn't come round and I couldn't go out. Of it was course, all locked down. down, you know. It was right at the beginning. And so um, they said, Can you do it? And uh, I said, Okay, I'll have a go. She said, You can just take, record it on your phone. Oh, it took me about two days to do, Graham, because I just no idea. I was so nervous about it, making videos. Recording my voice is okay. Then I was so nervous. And what will I wear? And Wendy said, wear this, wear that. And yeah, anyway, <laughs> I did it eventually and sent it in. And they said, this is great. You know, this is great. And then can you do some extra videos? So I just did me singing the song. And I said, what sort of things? They said, um, putting a mask on, uh, washing your hands, drinking some tea. <laughs> So I did all that and then sent it in. They said, great. And they made it into a video. And it ran on national TV in China. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. With, with because of the population of China, a huge audience probably well, of yes, millions. Yes, 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 yes. Wow. So it, it, the video, the actual video, it, it is on YouTube as well. I put it there. You can great. see it. But that, that got me thinking, well, wow, you know, if I can do that with one of my songs, what about the others, you know? So I started... <laughs> making videos, but I had no idea how to do it. No so how idea. did you learn? I thought, well, the first thing I needed is some software, you know? So yeah. I, I looked online and I uh, tried a couple of things that were no good. I tried a free one that was in Windows, it was rubbish. <laughs> and so then I, I found one called Filmora, really, really good. Yeah. And very user friendly, you know, for people like me. Yeah. Very easy to use. So that's what I use and I still use it. And Fantastic. I made it. I made some, Made some videos, yes. So Music were videos. you were you writing songs before you were writing books? Oh wow. Well this this goes back a long time. This goes back to when I was in primary school. So now I can't say that um I was writing songs before I wrote well, before I wrote books, yes, certainly. Yeah. But not before I was writing other things. You know, I in when I was ten years old I wrote a, a play, a sci fi science fiction play. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, the teacher said, well, this is great. We should get other kids involved in the writing, you know? So I had a writer, writing team. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. But then that's because, um, you know, the teacher I had, he was very much into, into English and creative writing and that sort of thing. So, um, but after I left school, I didn't really do much. That's when I started songwriting. Yeah. Really because of my influence by the Beatles, you know, like you, I just love the Beatles. And I wanted to emulate them. So as soon as I got to university in Edinburgh, the first thing I did with my grant, because I, I don't know if you know this, but you know, in those years, in those days, you got paid everything. You right. know, I, I got six, six years university education paid by the government, <laughs> plus all my, um, you know, all my accommodation and fees, everything. And so anyway, the first time I got my grant check, I thought, I'm going to buy a guitar. I must buy a guitar. So I did, and I went to this shop in Nicholson Street in Edinburgh, a music shop, and I bought a guitar. It cost me seven pounds. Right. So it was a, it was, it was not an expensive. It was not a, a, a top of the range guitar. No. No, but uh, you know, I, but that was. I mean, seven pounds went a long way in nineteen seventy three. Yeah. <laughs> but even so, yeah, it was, it was. It was a cheap guitar. Yeah. Because like, I thought there's no point spending a lot of money if I find out I'm not going to go for this you know yeah but a cheap guitar is much harder to play <laughs> yes <laughs> you're right one. It's that, a... yes. <laughs> much much I harder that, yes play. i discovered that the hard way <laughs> yeah but I, I was i was so determined you know i i, I never I, i'd go to the lectures in the morning in the afternoon i went back to my gigs and i just played the guitar and wrote songs wow and in, in fact so two of the songs that i wrote then when i was a student that we we still play them. We used to play them in our, in our gigs, and, and they're on they're on YouTube. You'll see them. What are they called? What's the titles? One's um, when you are down. Yeah. And this this came about because in that's my second year, and this was a consequence of uh, you know <laughs> not paying attention to my studies. <laughs> I failed all my exams. Oh, because and, you were obsessed with the thought, guitar. Well, yes, yes. Yeah. And my girlfriend left me. But it was great inspiration for the music. I mean, as a, as a creative person, 
you want horrible things to happen in your life. I mean, there's so many yeah, musicians, so, yeah. so many musicians who used to be great and not so good anymore because they've got everything they wanted because they became successful. They've got nothing to write about. They've got the probably, girl yeah. now. They've got the money. <laughs> got yeah, the it's probably true. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. But I remember, I remember going for an audition. I did. I went to this uh, called Craig Hall Recording Studios, and I contacted them and phoned them up, and they said. Uh, of course, no internet in those days. I found them up. And they said, yeah, come along, play your songs, you know. So I played a couple of songs. And by then, I'd bought a new guitar because I realized I must get a better guitar. And I was, but I was very, I was still holding my, I was looking at my fingers, you know. Yeah. Anyway, I recorded six songs and I thought they were terrible. And they said, uh, do you want to hear it back? No, no, I said, no. <laughs> I'll just go home. <laughs> but they said, no, we'll play one anyway. And it, and it sounded okay, you know. Yeah. So I said, well, okay. I said, what happens next? They said, well, we'll call you. You know, don't call us. <laughs> that sort of thing. Well, they never there's, call. <laughs> there's, there's something I discovered once. I went to, I, I went on a trip to Memphis and I went, of oh, course, wow. I did the whole thing. I did Graceland and Stax and Son. And when we took, went on the tourist tour of Son, at the end of Son, they, and you know, you stand on the X where Elvis recorded and everything, you know, it's cool. Oh. And they said, at, in the evening, this is a working recording studio. People come here and record. Wow. So we were due to go to a radio conference in, where was it? It was in Chicago. And I said to Julia, I said, why don't we fly to Memphis and we'll drive to Chicago, up old Route 60, part of old Route 66. So I said, why don't I ring? So I, I emailed Son and I said, how much does it cost to, to book a recording session? And it was, I think it was, it was cheap. It was, I think it was $150 an hour. And for that, you got an engineer. And I said, well, wow. I thought, well, I said, well, straight away, I said, well, book me three hours. And my wow. plan was I was going to fly to Memphis. And we'd seen like the guys busking on the street of, were better. Some of them were better than the artists when you got in the clubs. They were just mm. better musicians. I said, what I'll right. do is if I've got this session booked, I'll find a few buskers and say, look, how much do you want to back me up? <laughs> and I'll borrow a guitar and I'll see if I can do three songs, one per hour with no overdubs. We'll just do them live in sun. Right. And I was on the radio and I thought, well, I'll, once I've got them, then I'll come back to England and on my radio show, I'll play these songs that I recorded at sun. That was going to be my plan. So this uh, is all going well, but we've got to be at this uh, radio conference on a certain date so we had we could we arrived in memphis on the i think it was the saturday and then we were leaving on the monday so we were going to record on the sunday night and uh about a week before we left they sent me a message and said oh you can't have it that night it's it's not available i'm like it's booked oh no you can't have it and I thought, oh, somebody big must be, you too must be in town or something. And I've been bumped, you know what it was? And we didn't, yeah, yeah. and when we got there, we realized why. It was Super Bowl Sunday. Um, <laughs> they obviously couldn't get anyone to work on the Super Bowl Sunday because it's a big family day. But if you ever wanted to record at Sun in Memphis, the price has probably gone up now, but it's not silly money. And right, you go right. in at night and you get an engineer and you can record at Sun. So if you ever wow. wanted to do that, <laughs> check it out. Well, I mean, that is will, something yeah. You, 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 yeah. So let's get back to writing then. So what was your first attempt at, uh, wow. at a published novel then? Oh, yeah. Well, what, so leading up to that, and this is something I really wanted to say, is that um, join a writer's group. You know, if you, if you want, if you're an aspiring writer, you want to write, join a writer's group. Because that was so good for me. And that really got me into serious writing. Tell me about the writers' group. Is this like a thing in a community hall? Is it an online thing? How no, does it no, work? no, no, no. No, no. I mean, when I I was in a writers' group in Scotland, that was my first group, on on because I lived um on the west of Scotland, on the Isle of Bute in Rothsey. My and, um uh, my uncle Brian, uh, he died this year actually. He used to run the cafe right on the front there, Brian Hughes. Uh, oh, uh, I know him. You know my yeah. uncle Brian. He died this year. You, you do, and and his daughter Brenda, Teresa, Jacqueline, Anne. You know Brian Hughes. No way. Or you knew Brian Hughes. No way. I knew of him. I can't say a friend of him or anything, but I knew of him because it's, it's a small place. You a know? Very small place. He was like an odd job man. He did lots of odd jobs and building work yeah, yeah. And, and window cleaning. Oh and yeah. Anything. 
yeah. the name's very familiar. He yes, was a grafter, I, I, yeah. Yeah, and he was there for he, he. I mean, I think he went up there in like the early seventies or late sixties, and yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. was on the island, Rothsey. Yeah. So you yeah. were in you were in Rothsey. Wow. <laughs> Rothsey. Yeah, I was in Rothsey, and um, so there was a writers' group called Isle of Butte Writers Butte Writers Group. It was Butte Writers Group, and um, the funny thing was, I mean, I, at that time I was obviously younger. This was in uh, this was about twenty years ago. Yeah. And, um, but I was, I was still by far the young, I, how old, anyway, I was the youngest in that group, <laughs> let's put it that way. But, uh, they were all, they were all retirees. They were all pensioners. Yeah. And, um, and what and did, where did you meet up? Group. Was, did you, did you meet up at people's houses or how did this work then? Um, we used, we used to meet, um, we used to meet, I can't remember where, in the library initially, in the yeah. library. And we had met there, but then after a while, we moved to where I used to live. I lived in a, it was quite a big house. It wasn't my house, but um, it was actually the place I worked. I worked for, um, it was a sort of educational trust, which had a, a trading arm. It's a charity with a trading arm, you know, like Oxfam or something. But, but it was an educational trust and the, the, the business side was jewelry. So we, we made costume jewelry and I was doing the accounts for the company. And anyway, they had the, they had a big room, which we could use. So we used that. And it's a very nice room overlooking the sea. Anyway, there were really great characters. I'd never been in a writer's group before. And it was just, it was great fun for one thing. It was really great, great, great fun. Great, great crack, as they said. Yeah. And, uh, and we had a project. And it was very well, well organized without being too officious. You know, it was all very well done. And we would take turns to set a project. And then every two weeks, we'd write on something. And it really, it really got you into, it made you a good writer, I think, because you've got criticism from, from your peers. You, you, you know, your friends and family, they're going to tell you, oh, that's very nice, dear. You know, lovely, lovely. Send it off. Uh, but they, you'll get the truth from uh, real writing colleagues. Other writers will, will be honest with you and they'll be fair. Yeah. And they'll say if they like it and if they don't like it, they'll tell you, they'll tell you why. And yeah. uh, so fantastic feedback. And also it was, it stretched your writing. You know, if someone says, well, I'm a science fiction writer, they'll say, well, no, you're not. You're a writer. And, uh, and you're going to, this week, you're going to do some poetry. Oh, and it would force so, you into, out of your comfort zone. Yes, exactly. And so, and we were all happy with that because, and we were a very homogeneous group. You know, we worked very well. And so one week it could be a poetry, it could be a play. I remember one time it was a 10 minute, 10 minute uh, TV play. And, uh, and then it could be detective story one time. And I'd never written, a, I mean, detective story, I had no idea. <laughs> so I, I read an Ian Rankin book. Have you ever heard of Ian Rankin? He's, he's a very good uh, crime writer. Right. And he, he's, he's from Edinburgh himself. He's from Edinburgh. And he's still writing. He's still writing the same, same character, same book. I don't mean the same book, I mean. <laughs> the same, same series. series, yeah, yeah. And, and his, his character, his uh, detective is called Rebus. So Inspector Rebus yeah. is, is the main character. Anyway, so I read his book and I thought after that I could have a go. So I wrote this short story and uh, read it out at the group because we'd read out our own writing. Yeah. Which was great. You know? And then every year we had, um, we went to the Scottish Association of Writers conference. And that was, that was a brilliant thing because there you meet, you meet professional writers. Yeah you really get good advice and they give these talks there and you can just meet them one-to-one -one and get advice. And it's also competitions, you see? So yeah. I entered this, this story in a competition because I got good feedback from the group. And uh, it was for the unpublished writers section. And believe it or not, I won first prize. Wow, brilliant. <laughs> and what was that story? Uh, it, was, it, was, it, was, um, it was called 44 Acorn Grove. You'll find it, it's actually, you know, I, I wrote a set, uh, the set of short stories I put together, I made it into a book. And these stories, all but one, were written whilst I was in uh, Butte Writers Group. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it sounds to me like, people. you know, because if you're learning to play the guitar, because you're basically learning to do this. If you're learning to play the guitar, I always say to people, if you want to, once you've kind of got the basics down, got the cowboy chords down, get a band yeah. And make sure you've got a regular practice date every week.
because that right. forces you. You can't slack okay. off. You've got to be ready yeah. or you'll let everybody down. And it yes, seems yeah. like that's the same kind of thing is, is yeah. being being forced yeah. in a way, having a deadline yeah. to meet. You've got to put this stuff out in every two weeks. You've got yes, to get it yes. there and everyone's yeah. going to judge it. And if you haven't got the goods, you're going to look pretty silly. You just need that oh, kind of motivation, don't you, sometimes? You, you need it. And that's, that's why I said right at the beginning, I really strongly recommend, you know, join a writer's group. It really it hones your writing. It gives you great feedback, you know, honest feedback. And it practices you. Like I said, it's like professional footballers. You know, you can't just go and play, you know, once every three months or something. You know, you, you've got to be training and... Uh, and playing and it's just a profession so yeah it's it's a shame because a lot of people in the business i've been in a long time radio are not like that i can remember oh. and um i i i did a, an outside when i was at um century in in the northeast i did an outside broadcast in middlesbrough and i and i met this guy and, the, and he came he says oh my my son's a, a radio presenter i said oh, okay great yeah he says uh Oh, he just can't get on. He can't get anything. I said, well, has he done like hospital radio and community radio? And he said, yeah, yeah, he's done all that. I said, what's he doing now? He said, well, he's not doing anything. I said, well, why not? And he went, well, he's looking for a job to, on the radio. I said, yeah, well, until you get that. Do you, do you think, do you really think Eric Clapton, before he was in a band, was doing, do you think he was just sitting waiting? No, he was playing every night, you know? Of course, you, of course. Yeah, of you've course. got to be yeah. doing it, you know? Yeah. You've got to be doing it. I forget who it was. Who somebody said this, and you may know. I hope you know who this quote was. I don't. Somebody, because people wait, and they said, um, "Those who write are writers, and those who wait are waiters." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who said it, but you've just got to whatever it is you're into. You've just got to get on and do it because you don't you know do. Yes, you do. where it's going to go. Do. And this, for me, this audio book thing is very new to me. Um, yes. I, I ran a radio station in London up until uh, the 19th of February when they decided the station would run a lot better without me. And oh. uh, uh, my wife and I, she's from New Zealand. We went on a trip to New Zealand, oh. which was, it was a nightmare because I, I, while we were away, um, restrictions from COVID-19 came in and stuff. And we came home early and I was supposed to go to a radio conference in the US and we weren't allowed in the US. And I was supposed to meet some friends in Australia and we weren't allowed in Australia. And the whole thing was a nightmare, whatever. So we got back here and I'd, before we'd gone, I'd set up some like job interviews with some, some reasonably big people in uh, BBC and commercial radio. And of course, everything got cancelled. They don't even want to have a meeting with you. They won't even take your phone call because they're dealing with this COVID-19 thing. So I thought, well, what the hell am I going to do? And then um, I checked out this ACX thing and they said, you know, you can, you can voice audio books and authors put up their stories. And then I thought, well, I better just have a bash at this. And so I just went for it and I just haven't looked oh. back. I've got about, I think that I've done 12 books now since wow. March and five of them are on sale. And one of them- Wait, wait a minute, Graham, hold on. <laughs> Did you say you started this year? I started in March, yeah. This, wow. I'd never done an audio book until March this year. Wow. And, and um, <laughs> So yours was probably only something like the fifth or sixth book I I think it was okay. the sixth book I'd done. Uh, it was timely, and it was yours was the there, there was two there was yours and the Spitfire one which which turned it round for me because I didn't know what I liked I like I say I did a diet book and I've decided I'll never do a diet book again, but I worked out I really liked fiction and doing all the characters. And yeah, narrating yeah. the story and then telling that that's what and that's what what I look for now and that's pretty much all I do. Um, Great. That's that's actually very interesting because I love writing dialogue. I really love dialogue. Yeah. And uh, whilst whilst um, I, I seem to remember it came out of a project. So when I was I was still in Butte Writers Group, but towards the end of that time, and uh, one of the things was write. Um, I think I mentioned this. Write a ten minute um, TV a play for TV or radio. Yeah. Just from, I think the ten. So it's all dialogue. There's, there's virtually no narration. Oh, then, yeah, exactly, all dialogue. So it was either ten minutes for TV or long, or twenty minutes for radio, something like that. Anyway, so I I, I wrote something because I love I love writing dialogue, and um, and it was it was it was called the pipes the pipes, <laughs> and I had this idea about bagpipes, 
And I thought, what if in a, in a future world, bagpipe playing was on a par with drug taking? You know, it was, it was an illegal activity. <laughs> <laughs> you see, and I thought, oh, well, that, let's, let's just explore that. You know, so that's, that was my theme. So I, I wrote it and people I thought it was quite funny. So why don't you send it off, you know, send it off. So I sent it off to Channel 4 TV, I think it was. Anyway, they, nothing happened with that. And um, I sort of forgot about it. Then, you know, being in a writer's group, we used to go to different conferences in different places. We went down to the Isle of Wight one time and to different writers' conferences and things. Anyway, I met somebody down there. They said, well, why don't you make it into a radio play, you know? Right. I mean, 10 minutes. So, okay, okay. I thought, so 10 minutes originally. I made it into 40 or 45 minutes to radio play. And then... Um, I sent it off to the BBC and places. I never got anywhere. Anyway, later on, I thought, um, well, you know, I just one of these things you put in a drawer and forget about, you know. And then the local drama group called Butte Players, they approached us, the first Butte Writers Group, and they said this year they wanted to do something by a local author. <laughs> And so they asked us for, and you know, any plays. So we all, not all of us, but some of us, we gave them plays. And you know what's coming, don't you? So <laughs> they really liked my play, The Pipes, The Pipes. And they said, we'd love, we'd love to do this. Great. And they did. They did. So it was, and I wrote a bit more to extend it because they wanted, it's a whole play. It's supposed to be at least an hour and a half, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, so it, went, it went from 10 minutes to 40 to then an hour and a half, right? Yes, yes. But it, I didn't have to write it. I mean, I did have to write it uh, an, an extra scene or two or something. But uh, I didn't have to write as much as I would have thought because a lot of it is action, you know? It's yeah. the dialogue a lot of it takes. A lot of the, that takes up time. Anyway, they really liked it and they, um, they put it on as part of... They had, they, every year they had something called Butte Live and it was held at the Rossi Pavilion. It's quite a big venue. And it was packed and uh, it was it was really you know as a writer of a play you know or something it's, it's fantastic to see it to see yeah, people doing it because you it's actually, been, for you it's been words on a page and all of a sudden yes, yes. it's come to life it's brought, well it's actually very similar to the experience of you reading timely <laughs> really it's, it's that sort of thing it's a fantastic moment for a writer to to hear their words you know by somebody else <laughs> Not just in their own head. But it was so well so written and so so easy to do. What What is yeah. the, the trick then to writing dialogue? Because I suppose you could do too much, couldn't you? You've got to be really efficient and just have enough said to to move the story along and have the, the characters yes. and the emotions working. But you, 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 yeah, you, yeah. there must be a delicate balance there with, with whether it's too much or not enough. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, well, it's this thing about, you know, show show don't tell as well which comes into it you know they say that in in stories you know and um because you don't want to give you, you can't you can't in dialogue say everything you can't say you know i am walking down the road now or, yeah. or you know yeah. you obviously can't, you can't do that sort of thing so with a with a play you've got you've got action you know you, you've got the visual side yeah. so the writing you have to they have to complement each other yeah more more so than a book than in a book really and yeah, in the book, you... in Time Leap One, the copy, the yes. manuscript that I wrote, is that exactly the same as the as the book version, or did you rewrite it for the spoken word? No, I didn't actually. Funnily enough, I didn't. I didn't. Is but the... there again, you know, I didn't rewrite it for the spoken word. No. Wow. Okay. Because it, it it came across like it was written for the spoken word. It came across like it was to be read out loud. It wasn't. Oh, it wasn't like it was too. Cerebral, if you know what I mean. It was very. Oh, it was out there. It was just. That's just the way. I, that's the way I write. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you should I write some that. radio and TV stuff then, because surely that's what you need for that too. If it if it can come to yes, life yeah. that easy, because uh, some some writers they need you know a screenwriter to get hold of it and totally change it. But yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm not sure. I, I, one of one of our members of Butte Writers, he was. Um, he, he was he used to be an ambulance driver right he used to drive an ambulance and then he loved writing he wanted to do it professionally and he was offered a job to write for holby city wow to be one of the writers and he went down i think it's all done in liverpool isn't it he went down to liverpool or wherever he was and um when he came back he said it's not for me he decided it wasn't for me because he's in a team of writers and basically they tell you what to write 
Right, you know, so you writer's room. Oh, I'm going to write this. No, no, it's got to all fit in with an overall story that somebody's planned already. Yeah. And that, that and messes up. Just writing one part. Oh, you're writing Daisy this week, you know, <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> right. Right, so it became a job, which is which is why it became a job. Which yes, yes. You know, surely so, that's one of the nicest things about being a writer is it's not a job. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, so that that put me off. I could understand at first. I was shocked. I thought, you know, really? You sure? You know, this is what you want to do, isn't it? And then when he told us about it, I thought, oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't want to guy that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it's great to catch up with you like this. I see we're running out of time because we don't have the, yeah. the upgraded version of, of, okay. uh, of um, Zoom. Um, <laughs> but we should really see if we can sell some of these audio books, shouldn't we? Well, so, yes, we absolutely, yes. It's called Time Leap One. It is a cracking read. It's about time travel. It's about a mobile phone app. It's about Joe who goes back in time to prevent 9-11, the Second World War. He goes back to find out what the deal is with the pyramids. And that is actually quite enlightening when you find out what the true story is of the pyramids. Clearly, Steve is a real time traveler and he's gone back and worked all this out. And this book is based on a true story. Um, but, but yeah, it's, uh, and then the, the, the last, probably the last... Uh, bit of the book it's probably it's probably like the last what the last tenth of the book is when right, it right. really starts to get freaky when they go to the future and they don't go to somewhere like egypt or china <laughs> uh, they're in the uk and, <laughs> and it's uh and and it really is quite enlightening with a, a massive cliff, cliffhanger some great characters all the way through it and i thoroughly enjoyed it and i know it's going to be a huge success and it's available now on Audible and Amazon. And uh, yeah, it's great. What else do we need to say, Steve, to sell this thing? Because it is good. <laughs> it really is good. They won't regret it. Nobody will regret it. They'll, they'll love it. They'll, they'll be telling their friends. <laughs> yeah, and if you've never listened to an audio book before, just try one of these out. And there's a thing there on Audible. If you go there, you can sign up for a free trial of Audible, I think. And, and you get your first one free. So you don't even have to you don't even have to pay for it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> to start it. And the, the other the other big thing, Graham, of course, is it's being read to you by an amazing narrator. <laughs> you can do all the voices. Really, <laughs> it, it is. It makes a big difference. You know, people love them. I have this friend in Australia. He makes jewelry all the time. He's listening to uh, audio books. <laughs> Well, he's good. Doing it. It's it's it was good fun to do, and it's so well written, and it's a great story. And I hope you'll bring me on board for books two and three as well. Oh, definitely. Steve Graham, Harry, sure. Sure. thank you, <laughs> thank you very very much. Time well, leap one, date me. It's an audio book. It. It's about time travel. You won't regret it. It's great.